In this video, I'm going to try and provide you with a little more information about uh, gable end walls with roof trusses and how they can appear to be load bearing or why they're considered to be load bearing when in reality they don't have the same amount of weight on as other load bearing walls. So a load bearing wall is usually going to be supporting weight from above and transferring it down to the building foundation. And you're kind of thinking, for those of you who know about uh, um, building homes, the concrete footing around the perimeter of the building is usually the same size as uh, the, the gable end wall. Let's say that uh, it has a 12 in, a, uh, one foot wide, 12 inches by 18 inches deep, let's say, and it's the same footing around the entire perimeter and uh, even though the weight is going to be distributed throughout the building a little differently, especially with a gable end wall. So I think the concrete footing around the perimeter of the building, keeping it the same size with the amount of rebar, is uh, meant to create a container for the building. If you had different size footings, you know, obviously you don't need a heavy duty footing or the same footing here because of the weight distribution. Um, but it's there to create a container for the house. And let's face it, the footing foundation is going to be what's ultimately keeping the house uh, together. You know, you're going to be sitting on top of a foundation. If this foundation moves or um, settles somehow or cracks, um, then sections of the house are going to start to fail also. So that's the foundation. Let's go ahead and take a look at the trusses. The gable roof truss is a different design. It is not meant to be used in the same manner as the trusses that sit um, or have the weight transferring to exterior walls or to walls that are going to be load bearing. So there is just no way that this wall is going to have uh, the same amount of weight transferring through it as this one here or this one here. So that's the first thing. When they refer to these walls as load bearing, um, I think that uh, what might be a better idea or a better reference would be to um, refer to them as structurally supporting walls because they are going to prevent the building from moving side to side. And these braces here for the trusses will prevent the wall in this situation here where there are no connecting walls. This wall, this brace connected to the truss will prevent the wall from moving in this direction here. So take a look at the header in this wall. This one's going to need to be a little stronger than the one over here, even though most of the time they are going to be exactly the same size. Now, if you're an engineer out there and you have some type of reasoning that something I'm missing, feel free to share it with me. And um, and if I think it's a little ridiculous or that you might not be an engineer, I will remove your comment. I know some a lot of I save the my viewers a lot of pain from some of the comments where people come in and um, say something, oh, that's ridiculous. Well, you got to at least uh, meet me halfway on that and explain why something might be ridiculous. So again, you're an engineer, you want to help us out, great. You're somebody that wants to pretend to be an engineer. Um, go to somebody else's channel. So you can see here where the bracing system that is using that we're using to prevent the trusses from moving after the roof is sheeted and the ceilings are drywall. This is going to provide us with some nice support to prevent the um, wall from moving. Now, if you have a wall in here, uh, something like this, then the top plates are going to be very important. The top plates here are going to, and if this is a shear wall, by the way, that's going to add add structural strength, lateral structural strength to the building. So, and this probably would be because uh, a wall like this that might be 20 foot long, you might have it in a garage, you know, a wall like this that's 30 foot long um, and uh, you have the braces, you just, you might need a few more braces in there um, to uh, prevent it from moving. Take a look at how these um, braces, they sit on top of the roof truss in this situation here, and then the framing plates would tie together in that situation there. 
give you an idea of it here. So the weight from above is just simply going to be transferred. So the weight that is right here on a regular truss that uh, is supported at the ends, all of the weight here is transfers to the end. On the gable roof truss, all of the weight transfers down. So, and there's not a lot of weight here, you know. If you have a tile roof and, um, you know, a, a stucco wall that's an inch thick, I, I just can't see it. There's just not a lot of weight on here. So, again, we've got to get back to focusing on the lateral strength and not actually something that is uh, load bearing, or at least take it into consideration that it's not the same amount of weight that we would have here. A wall like this is going to be easier to modify than a wall like this. Um, but we've got to keep in our uh, our side to side movement. And that's the main thing I want to stress in this video. A lot of people just go in and they remove a wall and they go, wait, that's not a load bearing wall. There's not a lot of weight on this gable end wall. I'm going to put a big, uh, you know, 10 foot window in here. Well, you could weaken the um, side to side or lateral movement of the of the building. So there might not be as much weight coming down this way. You might not, uh, the wall might not be supporting a lot of weight from above. But if it's framing plates and structural shear panel that is uh, preventing the wall from moving and you want to uh, make a window larger, put a door in there. That's just going to be something you're going to need to consider. Now, I always recommend getting a um, engineer involved in a project with any modifications that you are going to do. And that hasn't changed. But uh, I understand that a lot of people watching these videos have no intention of getting an engineer. And with that said, I just want to point out that with non-bearing walls, and I'm not going to consider this to be a non-bearing wall, I just can, don't consider this to be as um, a load-bearing wall that's going to be supporting the same amount of weight as um, the walls where the roof trusses are going to be sitting on and transferring all of the weight of the roof to the outside of the roof truss um, and the walls on each side instead of a gable roof truss where all of the weight... You know, if I take this piece of plywood out and put an opening in here, the weight from this section of the roof isn't going to be affected by it. All the weight coming down is still going to be, you can't tell me the weight from here, or let's go over to here, the weight from here is going to go all the way over to here and transfer down. No, common sense is going to tell you it's going to come down here. So you're just not going to have as much weight with a transferring um, weight from above um, if you have a situation like this. Uh, my main concern is just going to be the lateral movement and yours will need to be also.